Hi everyone, it's Esteban Morales here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the latest version of Nabla Looper via Repack. We will also look in detail how Nabla Looper works. If you don't know Nabla Looper yet, it's basically a set of tools that will enable us to do live looping in Reaper Dog. We'll have available two operating modes. With the arrange mode, we can pre-program the structure of our song, define the sections to record a loop, and also define where this loop will be propagated. In this way, we can create more complex and totally hands-free looping sessions. With the manual mode, we have a more traditional looping style, very similar to pedal boards like the Earl's Loop Studio or the Boss RC 505. All of this in a linear way across the arrange view of Reaper. Let's get started. If you don't have a previous version of Nabla Looper installed, you can go directly to step 2. First, go to the Actions menu, Show Action List, Filter by Nabla Looper, Select all the scripts displayed in the list, click on the Delete button, close this window, click on Options, then Show Reaper Resource Path. Find the scripts folder and open this up. Select Nabla scripts and delete this folder. Close that out and also close Reaper. Head over to our browser and go to reapack.com. That'll bring you right to this page. Go to the download section and select the file that matches your Reaper's architecture. Now go ahead to sws-extension.org, scroll down to the download section, and select the right file for your system. Now open Reaper, go ahead to the Options menu, and select Show Reaper Resource Path. Find the User Plugins folder, open it, go to the folder where we downloaded the files previously, select and copy the Repack file. This should have dylive extension for macOS and DLL for Windows. Go back to the User Plugin folder and paste it into here. For the SWS file, we need to open the DMG file on macOS. Copy the dylib file that is inside and paste it into the user plugins folder. For Windows, you just need to run the exe file and follow the instructions for the installation. Close this window and restart Reaper for the changes to take effect. Head over to Reaper, go to the extensions menu. Select Rear Pack and click on Import Repositories. We need to paste this link here and click OK. Click on Extensions, Rear Pack, Browse Packages. Here we filter by Nabla. We should see here the different scripts for Nabla Looper, the Arrange Mode, the Manual Mode the toolbars, and Cite for Nabla Tools, which is a library for graphical user interface. Now we're going to select the files that matches our Reaper's architecture, then right-click, select Install, and click on Apply. The files will be downloaded. At the end, a window will open with an installation report. Click OK. Finally, search for js underscore rearscript API, select it, right click, install, and apply. That's all. Click OK, OK here, and OK. We need to restart Reaper for the changes to take effect. Once we are in Reaper again, go to the Actions menu. Show Action List and filter by Nabla Looper. 
If everything went well with the previous installation, we should see here our list with the different scripts for Nabla Looper. Before starting to use any looping mode, we are going to open the settings window for each one and click on the save button. Let's go ahead to the view menu, then toolbar docker. Right here you can right click in and select customize toolbar or click on the edit button. Head over to this drop menu and we're gonna select one empty floating toolbar, then click on the import button. By default this window will open up into the menu sets folder, so we need to go back to the Reaper resource path. Now just go through scripts folder, Nabla tools, Nabla looper, and finally toolbars. I'm gonna select the Nabla looper arranged mode file, then click on open and retitle. Now I will do the same for the manual mode. Actually, you can create your own toolbars. These are only for reference. And I prefer to work with MIDI or keyboard shortcuts, as we can see just in a moment. Click on close. Right click over here. Position toolbar. And select a top of main window. Actually, you can put in whatever you want. If you right click in over here, you can switch between the different toolbars. I'm gonna click on actions and then go for show action list and search for Nabla Looper. You can assign a MIDI or keyboard shortcut to any script. Just select one, click on add and hit a key or press a MIDI controller. I will test this, select my main window, press my shortcut and that's it. We can set all the scripts this way, but for the manual mode, we must follow a special procedure. Firstly, we're gonna set a shortcut for the manual mode action, just as we saw earlier. With this action, we'll start the manual mode. And to start a loop recording or stop it, we are going to use the script trigger actions. If you want to use a MIDI controller, you must assign the shortcut directly to this action. In this case, I will use my sustain pedal. To control this action from the computer keyboard, I will first assign my shortcut in this script. Select it, click run, and then hit your keyboard shortcut. Okay, now, I'm gonna assign the same shortcut, but now directly to this action. Click on Add, hit your key, and click OK. Remember that these two actions are for controlling or trigger actions script. That's all. Now we're ready to see how Nabla Looper works. I'm gonna create a simple project to see what's gonna happen when I run Nabla Looper. In other videos, I will explain how to create and configure your own projects. But for now, if you already haven't yet subscribed to our channel, this is a great time to subscribe. Hit the subscription button and ring that notification bell. That way, you will be notified when we upload the next video. When we start Nabla Looper, we'll notice some changes in the tracks that contain a record item. First, the track will be disarmed, record monitoring will turn off, and an instance of free delay will be added to the effects chain. Later, we'll see what this is for. In the range view, we'll see that the size of the items has changed. This is because the free item positioning option has been activated. We continue a bit more. Right here, we see how the track goes to record mode 
and immediately start the recording. As you may have noticed, it starts earlier than we specified in the record item. And this is to fully enable the effects that we have in the track before starting the loop section. In this way, we will prevent audio artifacts. We can adjust this pre-recording time into the Nabla looper settings. Just at the moment of starting the loop recording section, the track monitoring will be enabled throughout the loop section. At the end of the loop, the track will be disarmed and monitoring turned off. In the range view, we'll see that the loop recorded will be propagated to all simulated named items. I'm going to repeat the loop recording, but this time we are going to observe from the effects chain. At the start of Nabla Looper, an instance of real delay will be added to the effect chain, and some parameters are configured. The wet position will be at 0%. This is like being in bypass mode. So let the recording continue. Actually, this real delay instance will be useful only at the end of a loop recording. Right here, the wet parameter changed to 100%, so now it is activated. And just after a moment, it's in bypass mode again. With this workaround, we will prevent audio cuts at the end of a loop recording. We can adjust this protection time in the Nabla Looper settings with the buffer time control. You can disable this workaround by unchecking the safe mode option in Nabla Looper settings. Finally, when we stop Nabla Looper, the real delay instance will be deleted. That's all for now. In the coming videos, I will be showing you different ways and techniques to create amazing loop sessions with Nabla Looper. So, stay tuned.